Okay, I have a fun 21 card trick to show you today. And this is certainly not your grandma's 21 card trick. Okay, so as you can see, I have a good selection of cards, numbered cards, face cards, uh, various suits. So we'll go ahead and gather these. Now, since the two of us actually saw the cards, uh, let's go ahead and mix them so that no one knows where anything is, okay? Uh, how would you like these stacked? Left on right or right on left? Okay, very good. Uh, we can also give it, if I can pick up the cards, uh, Charlie A Shuffle, uh, or if you're here, I'd have you just randomly cut the cards at some location, okay? Uh, we can even do what's called an up jog. Have you seen this before? Um, this is where, for example, uh, you can jog forward or push forward the even position cards. So cards in positions two, four, six, eight. And then what you do is you strip those out, random stack. How would you like these stacked? Left on right? Okay, very good. And maybe we'll just give it another Charlie A shuffle so that these cards are beyond the knowledge of anyone on planet Earth. Okay, now from here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to perform the Klondike Shuffle. Now, you've seen me use this before, um, and the fact is we really never use it on odd-sized packets um, too often. I mean, sometimes we do, I guess, but we don't, we don't normally use it on odd-sized packets to, quote, mix the cards. And then from here, I thought we would do something uh, quite simple, actually. I'm going to just deal them out like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Wow. What has that done to the cards? Anything interesting here? Okay, so let's just show the cards. We'll try to show all 21 of them on the screen if I can. Okay, so here we go. Now, as we reveal these, um, see if you can find anything interesting about these little triples here. Okay, so I'll put those there. Um, let's see, these three can maybe go up here. Do you see anything interesting yet? Okay, and those can go there, and maybe these can go here. Not sure why I put them upside down, but there you go. Okay. Well, anything interesting about these? Well, I suspect you've you've kind of spotted something interesting. And in fact, I, I have this written prediction off to the side that's been in camera view the whole time. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at what I wrote before we even began any of this. Let's see, each triple will contain the same suit. Was that, let's see, these are all spades. Those are spades too. Clubs, <laughs> diamonds, clubs, hearts, diamonds. Oh boy, how likely is that after randomizing the cards as we did? Oh, wait, that's right. There's actually a second half to the prediction. Each triple will add to 21. Oh, is that why I called this the 21 card trick? Okay, what, what is that referring to? Let's see, three plus eight is 11 plus 10 is 21. <laughs> Five plus, let's see, kings of 13, so that's 18 plus three, 21. Queens of 12, 14, 21, 13, six, and then 21, let's see. 7, 5 is 12, plus 9 is 21. 12 plus 1 is 13, plus 8 is 21. And the same thing here. 4 plus 11 plus 6 is 21. Wow! How in the world did we do that working together? You decided how to stack the piles, and I'm sure that would make a difference to the outcome. So boy, did you make some great choices. Okay, so how does this crazy effect work? And it actually is a pretty crazy effect. <laughs> it's one that I recently, uh, the principles behind it, just in the last few days, uh, were discovered. Um, I honestly don't know if anyone is aware of what I'm going to show you here. I've never seen it before. 
Um, in some ways, I kind of doubt it, um, just because uh, you have to have a mind that works in a very strange way. And I know there's been a lot of weird people over the centuries, but I don't know. I might take the first prize for that. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm uh, organizing them in just random ways here, so I apologize for that. Um, yeah, so what you do is you decide on seven triples that you want to reveal. These can be anything that you like. Here they were cards of the same suit that happened to add up to 21, right? Which plays into the title of the performance. Um, but you can have these all, these could all be like aces, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, and sevens at the end. In fact, that's initially how I discovered this principle is I, I started with a packet like that. Um, okay, and then from there, you just randomly stack these, maybe kind of mix up the colors a bit if you can, okay? So um, they won't perfectly alternate necessarily, but so just stack those and, and you know, turn the packet face down. So th this is a just a little bit of preparation. This is what I did before I hit the record button. So from there, what I did was um, I dealt out three cards or three piles. So what it's going to do is it's going to put the first set of three at the bottom level of each pile. The second set of three will be at the second level, third at the third level, okay? So what I'm creating here are coupled piles, coupled piles. So these are piles that at the same level, they have cards that are related in some special way that we're interested in, okay? Now you can randomly stack these and it will create something called a three cycle having cycle length seven. So I'll go ahead and just bring over a write up here. In fact, maybe I'll just move these here to kind of show you what it is we're doing. Okay, so there you go. So we have something called a three cycle and the cycle length is seven. Okay, now the like quintessential representation would be something like this one through seven one through seven one through seven so if you want to like mentally go through and renumber these like this is one two three four five six seven and so forth um, that's kind of a nice way to think about this because it makes it less complicated and in the end you can put anything in the positions occupied by the ones or occupied by the twos and so forth which is what i actually did right um Okay, and then uh, before before we actually do the Klondike Shuffle, uh, I actually mix the cards. Now this also involves principles that I've recently discovered or rediscovered. Perhaps others know about this already. I'm not aware of that. Uh, but the fact is if you have an odd cyclic packet that has odd cyclic length, you can actually perform left-right shuffles with random stacking and it will preserve that property. It will preserve that characteristic, okay, of being an odd cyclic packet with odd cyclic length, okay? So you can do as many left-right shuffles as you like. Um, of course, since it's cyclic, you can do uh, random cuts. Of course, just an ordinary random cut. Uh, better still is the Charlier shuffle that I use extensively on my channel. So this, I'll put a link in the description below to a video that teaches you the Charlier shuffle. So that's a very convincing little shuffle as well, okay? And then, um, oh, I did an up jog. Okay, so you can either do um, an even up jog, which is what I did in the performance, or an odd up jog. Well, an even up jog is where you just jog forward the even position cards, two, four, six, eight, and then you just strip those out, random stack. That also preserves this kind of structure. Now the cards are being significantly moved around. It's just that they're being moved around in a consistent way relative to each other that in the end preserves the cyclic organization of those 21 cards where there's three cycles with having cycle length seven. And I apologize, I live in a small town that is preparing for an exciting air show tomorrow. So there are planes flying over my house constantly. So I apologize for the background noise. So this is still a three, what I call a three cycle, having cycle length seven. 
Now, the Klondike Shuffle. What does that do to a cyclic construction of this sort, where it's a three, so odd cycle, with an odd cycle length? Well, it ends up doing something very, very interesting. And I'll show you here in just a second. So uh, the Klondike Shuffle, of course, is where you take the top and bottom cards off as one. Okay, that's all I'm doing. And I've, uh, if I've done it correctly, I should finish with just one card since we started with an odd number of cards, of course. Okay, now this is going to have a very special structure to it. Now it's not going to have this, uh, come to think of it, these cards aren't going to match the, the numerals here uh, because I didn't start with a packet one through seven, one through seven, one through seven, which I could have. Uh, but the point is there is uh, relative to the triples that we chose, there is a pattern that's being captured in this list of numbers here. So let me just move this out of the way because it's kind of in the way. So if you begin with like ace through seven of clubs, ace through seven of hearts, ace through seven of spades, perform one Klondike shuffle, what will happen is you'll have a four here, now you won't know necessarily what suit it is. We're only focused on values. So you'll have a four, three, five, two, six, one, seven, and then look at what happens. You get a seven, one, six, two, five, three, four. Hmm, that's interesting. This is the reverse of that. So technically the first 14 cards here are in a mirrored relationship. If you kind of cut down the center, you'll get a couple of sevens, come out one, you get one, six, two, five, three, four. That's like a little mirrored packet. Same thing ends up happening for the second two sets of seven. So you get a mirrored construction there as well, as you can see. And so if you just focus on the structure involved, what that means then is if I deal out these seven cards, one, like I did, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then go backwards, put them down in reverse order, right? And then set down the next seven from left to right. What we will simply do is we'll put together all of the ones, twos, threes through seven. And so a way of seeing this is you go ahead and just renumber things so that the four is associated with one, the three with two, the five with three, the two with four, the six with five, the one with six, and the seven stays where it is, okay? So with that renumbering, which is much nicer, easier for us to process, what we discover when you make those substitutions, you know, once we've switched these values, you'll see, of course, that you just get seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, that's really cutting away all of the unnecessary mess of the particular packet I chose to work with for the outcome that I wanted. This is fundamentally what's happening. You can think of these cards here, whatever are in those positions. If you now reverse the dealing of them and then reverse the dealing again, you're going to group together all cards of the same value, okay? Now value here, Three cards being a one means it's one of those triples that I chose that have the same suit and add up to 21. Okay, and so what I'm claiming then is if I deal a seven, so top seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now if I go seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then deal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll get those very pairings that I showed you. So that's the way I did it in the presentation, which is actually different than I thought to do it originally for the write-up. Let me just show you the write-up here, which I think is a cool way of doing it. So you can do it the way that I showed you. Just kind of rewind that, okay? It's like you're just winding through one through seven, and then you deal in reverse order, and then you deal in reverse order, and you reach the finale, okay? But what I originally thought, because of the mirrored structure here, this is what I, let me just show you why I thought of what I did. So it's like I'm dealing out these, and then I thought, oh, you know, if you now Klondike, this is a mirrored packet, a mirrored structure. So Klondike shuffling will bring the sevens together as a pair, 
the ones together as a pair, a six, a two, and so forth. Well, that ordering is just the opposite of the ordering here. And so what you can do, and this is what I had vision doing, is Klondike shuffling two there, two here, two there. It's kind of hard to fit it in camera view because of the width. Two there, two here, two here, and two here. It will accomplish the same thing. Namely, you'll have... Um, a set a set of three, a little triple of the same suit, okay? And that should be true for all of these. But far more surprising is the fact that within each little group of three, those cards have values that add exactly <laughs> to 21, okay? So if you think about that happening by chance alone, boy, you're far more likely to win a lottery than you are to accomplish this by chance alone, okay? So anyway, that's the secret behind it. It has to do with what effect the Klondike Shuffle has on a three cycle having cycle length seven or an odd cycle length. So thank you for watching and look for other videos on my channel. There's many of them. And they all often use similar properties to what I'm showing you here. And as you learn those properties and principles, you can create your own amazing card magic that no one's ever seen before, quite honestly. And you'll be the creator of something that did not exist before. So I think that's pretty cool. And I hope you'll join me in other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.